So we're here digging sweet potatoes and Bridget and I have already dug up a few of them. We'll show you here. These are nice dark, deep dark purple sweet potatoes. Now we planted these. It's been a good, I checked these at about 115 days and they weren't ready yet, 120 days. And so they've been given about 140 days. It works if you have enough season, you're just gonna get a little bit bigger sweet potatoes. And you can see from the inside of this one, a nice deep purple, purple it kind of got broke off there. Um, but these are growing really nicely. Uh, my wife had just mentioned that there were so many greens over top of this bed. And what we do is we pull off the greens and we just kind of get this initial stem and that's where we planted the sweet potatoes and I'll pull my drip over a little bit and Bridget and I kind of give you an idea of what it's like. Use our potato fork. Let's pull up a little bit here. See what we've got. I think we got a ton off of that slip. But, yep, there you go. These guys trailed out a good little ways. But that is a good eating size of potato. What do you think, Bridge? A little unsure about it. But uh, hey, sweet potatoes are one of the best things you've been growing as a staple crop, a calorie crop. I'm growing these on 30 inch market beds, which you may think, oh, well that doesn't seem that uh, feasible because of how far they trellis and what they, and kind of the growing habits. But all it took was cutting them back once or twice. You can do that with a uh, weed whacker or a whipper snipper. Uh, but I actually just used my Hari Hari knife, which uh, is parked over there. But uh, yeah, the sweet potatoes are going good. We'll come back when we get them all harvest and show you what we got off of 25 feet um, off of these market style of beds. All right, I just finished up the sweet potatoes and uh, yeah, this is what we got. This is a, I, I realized that the row, although it was 25 feet, or that that was technically sweet potato. I only planted 15 because I remember I only got 15 slips of these uh, when I first got them, and so 15 feet. I still haven't weighed it out, but uh, uh, and we, we can equate that to what a 25 foot market bed would be. And of course, you could take that to 50 or 100. Uh, but overall, uh, really good. <laughs> a really good result with these purple sweet potatoes uh, off of 15 feet uh, that'll that'll be a few meals there and we've got a lot more where that came from uh, and one thing i'll just note here on the sweet potatoes uh well actually a few things it's not ideal to harvest these after a rain or when it's been rainy like this but we had a lot of rain and we had a few days where it had dried up a little bit and we have more rain on the way and so i wanted to get these out of the ground and so after i pulled them out and just tossed them to the side let them dry off for a few minutes while i went down the row and then i just took a towel and just gently brushed off some of that extra mud the rest will be fine as they cure and we'll go over that curing process in a minute uh why you might be wondering why not let them all get this big that's a lot of sweet potatoes and if you're in a survival situation where every pound counts and you may be then yes let them get this big wait till they get this big uh the only reason you wouldn't are a few things number one those are hard to cut uh they're also take a long time to cook and if you have the space and, and you're able to grow you'd rather grow something like this that's almost a perfect baking sweet, sweet potato these make a great fry these would also make a great baking sweet potato they cook a little quicker they're going to be a little bit more tender now these won't be super hard and stringy because they haven't been out that long give them 200 days and they sure would uh, but 140 days i don't see a problem with this but where you will run into problems is as these get bigger they will start pushing up on top of the ground and when they start showing when they start sitting up here on the ground on top of the ground they are primo vole food, mouse food, uh, whatever type of rodent you have, they will go after sweet potatoes. And let's go talk about that. All right, so we've got sweet potatoes in here. And one other thing I'll mention is, you know, sometimes you get long ones or big ones, sometimes you get some longer ones, but all in all, you'd expect to get some pretty good sweet potatoes there. And again, I still haven't got a weight on those. I'm guessing that's over, oh, probably close to 7,500 pounds. Now here is why you don't want to let them get huge and start pushing up from the ground right here. Now, luckily there was only three out of all of those sweet potatoes, only three that had noticeable vole damage or mouse damage, or we don't have rats, but if you had rats, they would go after them. 
And what they'll do is as they push up from the ground, they're you know outside of the dirt or outside of your soil. And so a vole will come along and just munch on it. Now I won't eat the whole thing, but uh, that makes that a whole lot less appetizing. And when we've got all of these, you know, these will just go into the compost. And luckily it wasn't the other way around where these were all vole damaged and we only had three good ones. Uh, but all in all, that is a good potato harvest. Now you're asking, Gabriel, how do you cure sweet potatoes? Well, first of all, why do you cure sweet potatoes? Uh, well, here's a good example. So you see how thin that skin is. You can see it right there. Now this was one that um, I just had cut in half. And, and this is another reason why you cure it. Because when you're, when you're digging them or you might have some damage, you might slice one if you're using something like a spade to pull them out with. Uh, or here we had my digging fork kind of caused a little bit of an indentation there. And if you just bring them inside and put them on your countertop, those will go bad. And uh, these ones won't last super long. When you're growing a ton of sweet, baked sweet potatoes like we are, I want these to last eight months, nine months. And uh, I also want them to be sweet. And so if you want them to store and you want them to be sweet as, as sweet as can be, you're, gon you're going to want to cure them. And curing can be as simple as having some sort of greenhouse type structure, having a nice big blanket, setting them on a rack. You'd want to go somewhat single file. And these have been curing for about three weeks, two weeks. Um, there's no certain set time, but you want to be around 85 degrees and 85% humidity for around 10 days. The less temperature you have and the less humidity you have means the longer time you're going to want to cure them. But these, you can see, you know, I'm scraping them with my fingernail and I'm barely getting through there. So those are nice and cured. And then you could just take them inside, store them in a cool, dark place, about 55 degrees. And, um, you know, they'll store for eight, nine months easily. And uh, if, if they last that long, <laughs> if you grow as many as we do, then they, they hopefully will last up until then, because then we're getting ready to uh, get some more things into the ground. And so, but if you don't have a greenhouse and you don't have a blanket, you probably have a blanket. One thing you can do, and this is just a, as an example, is first of all, you could, if you have a greenhouse, you could just set them in your greenhouse. These ones, I did a test. Blanket in the greenhouse, in the greenhouse, nothing on top, and in the greenhouse with a plastic tote over top. Uh, and what I've found is the plastic tote really didn't produce anything differently than this or this. And, and if your temperature was different, that's one thing if you were running super high heat, super high humidity. But honestly, these have probably averaged 75 degrees and about seven, or probably about 60% humidity. So they needed a lot more time. But if you're in a smaller scale and say you're, you've just grown these, you've pulled them out of the ground, you could take a similar sized small bucket and you could put that, I would drill holes in it, and I would put that, as long as you have temperatures that are staying above 60 degrees at night, and so if you're in you know, North Dakota, this may not work because you're barely gonna get them out of the ground. But if you have warm enough temperatures at night, during the day, you're gonna build up a lot of humidity in this and po poke some holes in there, and you set that in a somewhat shady spot because you don't wanna cook the sweet potatoes, but you want them to really heat up, and you do that for about 10 days, two weeks, and. Um, you should have cured sweet potatoes. And it's not a science. Well, it definitely can be if you want them to be perfect, perfect. Uh, but if you do about 90% of the job, you'll still have delicious sweet potatoes uh, that are just amazing. And it, there's nothing better than taking a little slip and being able to grow something that can, you can eat, you can feed your family, something that'll store uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds that can easily store uh, for eight, nine months. So I hope this was helpful. Hopefully you decide to grow your own sweet potatoes. It's very simple, it's delicious, and it's a great way to kind of get into the staple crops of if you're, if you're wanting to grow more of your calorie needs and not just some sort of, uh, you know, a fun vegetable to grow in the garden. So hopefully this was helpful. Hit the like and subscribe button if you did find it helpful and share this with someone who uh, you think should grow some sweet potatoes next year. All right, I'll see you guys next video.